And now, for the most famous words in motorsports, please welcome your Grand Marshals for the Sprint Unlimited, Sprint fan Mark J. Corbin, and host of Larry King Live, Larry King. Drivers, start your engines! It's the Sprint Unlimited on Fox Sports 1, and in two laps, they'll be racing around Daytona. Fans voted on the race format, and they just unveiled your choice for the starting order. It's based on final practice speeds, which puts Danny Hamlin and Jamie McMurray up front, and three heavy hitters way in the back, Matt Kenseth, Ryan Newman, Jimmy Johnson. But eight of the last 11 Unlimiteds have been won from back there. Take a quick look at the starting lineup. 20 drivers eligible. Ken Schrader, Mark Martin chose not to participate. So based on practice speeds, Denny Hamlin, Jamie McMurray, Toyota and a Chevy in row one, Ricky Stenhouse in his first unlimited, and Kyle Busch, the 2012 winner. Brad Keselowski and the man who's won it three of the last five years, Kevin Harvick. Michael Waltrip, can you get him on the horn? I'll try. Hey, Kevin, it's Michael Waltrip up in the Fox Sports 1 booth. You got a copy, brother? Got you, man. You've won three of the last five of these things. I said earlier, you got to be crazy to win one of these races, but yet you seem so normal. How do you do it? Guess I have good doctors, right? So, um, you know, this race is just a lot of fun. Just got to thank uh, Jimmy Johnson, Sprint, and everybody for just letting us come out here and kind of have a good time and not worry about anything but the trophy and the check. Well, right there above the Budweiser sign in your car, it says Freaky Fast. Is that number four car Freaky Fast tonight, bud? It's, it's, it's pretty good. I mean, it's all going to come down to just putting yourself in the right position there towards the end of the race. So it's, um, it's as good as anybody, so we'll just see what happens. Well, when the checker flag falls, we're going to go to Brazil and watch Machata fight Mazazi. What do you think? Which one of those guys is going to win? Machita, man. Machita. Well, I'm going with Machita. Um, we love some EFC fights, so tune in after you get done, done with this race. All right, man. Have a fun time tonight. We can't wait to watch it. You can tell he's a big fan. Did I say those names even remotely close? You're in the right hemisphere. It's okay. <laughs> the Sprint Unlimited is the fans race, and you had uh, three big choices to vote on. On this beautiful night in Daytona Beach, the temperature got near 70 on a cloudless day this afternoon. A light breeze and clear skies tonight under a full moon, and you know what that means. On a short track Saturday night, that moon would have a gravitational pull, and it could mean carnage on the speedway. At least that's the superstition. We'll see how it plays out tonight. They had a big one in the ARCA race earlier today. Grant Enfinger took the checkered flag, but that was after a 18-car mid-race pileup. So the race format was chosen by you, the fans, tonight. You had three choices as well. And with the first leg locked in at 30 laps, the fans choice 25 laps for segment two and 20 laps for segment three. Now caution laps count all the way through. Regular race rules apply. Green white checker three up opportunities at that if needed to get this one finished. Now you can still vote on the restart order for the final segment. Go to NASCAR.com slash Sprint Unlimited or you can vote on the NASCAR mobile app. And after the second of three segments of this race, that's when the teams, the broadcasters, and you at home will find out what the choice is. Tonight's aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything they learn making tires for the grueling demands of NASCAR inspires what rolls into yours. Goodyear, official tire of NASCAR. Mike, these guys are just breathing a sigh right now. They're, they're comfortable, they're happy, they know what lies ahead. This is gonna kick off the 2014 season on the high banks of Daytona. It's getting ready to get intense. If you're out there, you're in your happy place right now, I'll bet. But you're, 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 it's so interesting coming to the green. You know what you've gotta do, and you're a different person. When that green flag flies, it's all bets off. You just go for it. And Mike, I had no idea how the vote was gonna come out for the starting order, but I find it so ironic. The three drivers that I talked about, 
they're the three drivers that starting at the tail end of the field. Matt Kenseth, Ryan Newman, and Jimmy Johnson. You're riding here with Dale Earnhardt Jr. Remember, he's starting in the back. I think you better keep a close watch on those four or five drivers back there coming from the back to the front. What about our man, JJ? He hasn't had one lap of drafting. He's going into this thing cold turkey, starting in the back of the field, but you're right, Larry. Look for those back cars to charge toward the front. Now, 17 of these 18 cars will not race in the Daytona 500. The exception is that silver car toward the back, Terry Labonte. His Frank Stoddard team is using the same car all throughout Speed Weeks for the Unlimited and for the 500. And the, 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 the direction from the crew chief and the owner, just race hard. We don't need that car anymore. Disposable cars. That's right. Hang on and let the rough side drag. You and we have waited all winter for this. For that pace car to make the hard left turn coming out of turn number four. And 18 of the world's best stock car drivers address themselves to the starting line for the first of three segments in the 75 lap sprint unlimited. Green flag and here we go. Stenhouse on point on the inside. McMurray leads the outside lane. How about three wide already? You saw Dell Jr. jump to the high side. Those cars in the back that we talked about being so fast aren't wasting any time trying to work their way to the front. Yeah, Dale Earnhardt Jr. in that white car, the 88. Matt Kenseth in the 20 right behind him trying to make their way up on the high side, getting to the front. Bush comes down to the middle. Patrick right behind and Johnson and Newman, the new driver of that 31. Denny Hamlin leads the first lap from the pole. Leaves a little room on the bottom as he picks up Stenhouse and Brad Keselowski. Looking for the front spot, not going to get it. Holds third on the inside. Hamlin going back and forth, bottom to top to the bottom to the top again in that number 11. That isn't going to work forever, Mike. He'll get a, these guys are going to get a run on him. That new spoiler on the back of the cars are making them very able to pull out and make passes and make moves and they'll get Hamlin. Yeah, you saw Jamie McMurray in that one car trying to give Stenhouse in the 17 a push, but Stenhouse goes low. McMurray and Kyle Busch in the 18 stay to the outside. Now Stenhouse in the blue car has no help. Keselowski closing in on him. And when Hamlin went to the bottom, nobody went with him and they're going to hang him out to dry. And Michael, we were talking about this earlier today. It's almost like if the drivers leave a little gap between them, that's when you can run the fastest in the draft. Yeah, we saw them trying to push each other in practice and it just doesn't work. That was timed perfectly by Jamie McMurray and grabbed the lead of the stripe all by about 18 thousandths of a second. Don't look for the bump drafting you may have seen at Daytona in the past because these cars seem to work best when there's a slight cushion of air between them. There's a lot of people that wondered, Mike, if these cars got lined up around the top of the speedway like we're seeing right now, can you drop to the bottom and make moves? Can you make it work on the bottom? Or will you just simply fall to the back? This is very interesting right now, early in this race, to see if anybody can move low and make some passes. Well, Denny Hammond in that 11, our pole sitter, he finally falls in line all the way back in the 13th position. He lost that many spots in a lap and a half. The drivers who started on the outside lane have come to the front. McMurray started second. Kyle Busch is second, started fourth. Kevin Harvick is third. He started sixth. Marcus Ambrose started eighth. Kurt Busch tenth. And they are the top five right now. Brad Keselowski dips to the bottom. He didn't want to ride around and line up top. He goes to the bottom. Or excuse me, that's Tony Stewart. We know Tony's feeling racy. He's ready to be back in the car. And look at Hamlin. When he lost the lead, he fell all the way back to 13th in that number 11. That's Carl coming over to side draft Tony Stewart to pull his momentum down so that Tony couldn't complete that pass. He's going to try to squeeze down in front of Hamlin. Didn't Hamlin didn't let him do it. Didn't leave a lot of room there, did he? These boys are serious. Yeah, 
Yeah, look at Tony Stewart in that 14 car. Steve Burns talked to him in the pre-race show. You can tell after being out of a race car for almost six months after being injured in a sprint car accident, how excited, how pumped up he was to be back in a race car. Stewart leads the second pack. How long will it take for this group to catch up with the leaders if the leaders stay single file? He closed in a couple of tenths of a second that lap. He's definitely going to make ground on them. Be interesting to see when he gets there if he uses that momentum he has to dive to the bottom again. He made it work. He's been the only guy to go to the bottom and make a pass. Working lap six of this first segment, which is 30 laps. Guess who's at the bottom again? <laughs> Tony Stewart in that 14. This man's used to racing three or four times a week. He hadn't raced in six months. He's not going to mess around, Larry. And just for a minute, Carl Edwards in the 99 dipped down there like he was going to try to help him. Now Stewart in the 14 gets back up to the high groove. And they're back in one big pack in about a lap. Danica Patrick in danger of losing the draft as they work out of turn two. When you get in that position, Mike, you're just hoping that someone will pull out and make a pass, make that aerodynamic draft bigger so you can close back in. She's in jeopardy right now. And if you're Jamie McMurray, Kyle Busch up in the front, you're pretty comfortable with things. Running side to, or single file, leading the race, you don't really want things to change. But these boys in the back, led by Tony Stewart, they're not going to sit around. Now, you're riding with Danica Patrick in the 10. You can see that pack is getting smaller and smaller. Watch the 48, Jimmy Johnson, the 99, Carl Edwards. They got a little close there. As Carl pulled out to pass, should I get back in? No, I better go. And that was all a, a move by Carl to take Jimmy's momentum away. He got right on the quarter panel of Jimmy Johnson so that Jimmy would slow down. And you know what? It almost worked. Those two back at 12th and 11th. Jamie McMurray continues to lead. Back here at eighth place. Again, the pack seems to separate just a bit. Now, the last time NASCAR was at a restrictor plate track, Daytona and Talladega, the nation's two fastest speedways, McMurray went to victory lane. We're looking at the front end of Brad Keselowski's number two car. You can see right below that big grill opening. That's where the actually opening is that puts air in to cool the radiator. And we were hearing that maybe one reason he was getting out of line, there may be a little debris on there that could make it start to run a little warm. There goes Tony again to the bottom. He just keeps picking them off one by one. <laughs> I love his attitude. Tony Stewart to the bottom to seventh place alongside Dale Earnhardt Jr as Jamie McMurray leads the Sprint Unlimited at Daytona. Kyle Busch has taken the lead in the Sprint Unlimited. Went underneath Jamie McMurray, slid up top, and took over the front spot. Jimmy Johnson trying to work the bottom, and you can still vote on how they will line up for the final 20-lap segment of this race on the NASCAR mobile app or nascar.com slash Sprint Unlimited. Michael, the top group is where the leaders like to play. Tony Stewart, Jimmy Johnson, others trying to make something happen on the inside. You know, if I'm in the back, I want to get some guys together and go to the bottom. We're seeing a, a group form up down there. The shorter way around the track is the bottom. I think that bottom groove would work if you just got enough guys down there to try it. Yeah, that's what I love. Michael's exactly right. I see Tony Stewart out there. He's eager to race, baby. He showed up showed up ready to go uh, moving down to the bottom making moves he's learning and, and that's what this race is all about he's he's moving forward he gets back in line gets some momentum dips back down and gets some more sometimes it prevails sometimes it doesn't Danica Patrick in the 10 had lost the field by about a dozen car lengths but gained it back up past Brad Keselowski. You know, if I'm Logano on back through there, Stenhouse, those boys, I'm going to get behind these cars that are on the bottom and try to get a group together. But the driver that's making a little hay on the bottom, Jimmy Johnson in that 48 car, he's pulling Carl Edwards in the 99. They seem to be able to make the bottom work right now as they keep inching toward the front. 
And now they're coming up on the one of McMurray. I just think that bottom will work if you get enough cars together down there. Michael, it seems they're two miles an hour slower than the leaders up in the high groove. Krista. Jamie McMurray right now confused on why there's no de the debris on his car. He's overheating. He was been talking about 240, 250, 260, 275 on temperatures. The oil up to 300. The binoculars have been out up on top of the pit box trying to figure out if there's debris on the grill and if it's blown off. That's why you saw Kyle Busch go by and get out in front. They were trying to get some uh, some air on the, on the front of the car there just to get that debris off of the grill. Yeah, as long as he was leading, there was no way that debris was going to come off the grill, so he wanted to get behind another driver, change the pressure on the nose, and the debris will come off. Now, at the other end of this pack is Brad Keselowski. What's up with the deuce? Steve. Well, he just confirmed something Clint Boyer just brought up, and he said, woo, I made a move there that didn't work. I learned my lesson. I'm just going to concentrate right now on running as fast as I can. He's fallen to 16th, Tony Stewart 17th. And Terry Labonte has taken his Ford to the garage. Halfway through the first segment of three tonight in the Sprint Unlimited. They're almost there, Larry. I like what I keep seeing with that bottom groove. You see Kevin Harvick in that four. He's bringing that group, and now they're up there two by two by two. Looked like Kurt Busch got a hold of Marcus Ambrose there, gave him a little bit of, of a push, it made him wriggle. Harvick makes the pass on the bottom, bringing Jamie McMurray in that extremely fast Chevrolet with him. There's our buddy Harvick, freaky fast. He's out front. And the 48 of Jimmy Johnson up 14 positions Mike, from where he, he started this how race. How does he do it? He never practiced any. <laughs> he did a lot of it on the bottom of the racetrack, though. Riding with Dale Earnhardt Jr. This is making me happy. I like this bottom groove. I like this side-to-side -side racing. Jimmy Johnson was 10th on lap 12. Now at lap 17, he is third, chasing Kevin Harvick and Jamie McMurray. How quickly things change. Danica Patrick was 13th when we went to break. She's third behind Harvick and Johnson. Tomorrow, 1 p.m. on Fox, we'll set the front row for the Daytona 500. 49 drivers will time trial, hoping for a spot in the great American race. That's tomorrow, 1 p.m. Eastern on Fox. Look how things have shuffled around. Jamie Mack was in the top three. He's last. Danica was 13th. She's up to third. Tony Stewart just ran over 200 miles an hour, Mike. We're over 200 in this race. Jeff Hammond. Mike, you talk about Danica Patrick getting up to third. During the offseason, after a great start here a year ago, sitting on the pole for the Daytona 500, she found herself third on the final lap, wound up eight. Her and her crew chief, Tony Gibson, during the offseason, watched a lot of in-car footage of that race to get her better acclimated to what they expect tonight's race. She told me during practice the other day she was looking so forward to getting a chance to take some of that knowledge she had already acquired through all that basically film study and put it to use tonight. So far, it seemed like it's paying off. And Jeff, this makes sense because this is the same car she set on the pole and finished eighth, and Krista Jamie McMurray's on pit road. He is, and that overheating issue that we talked about, smoke coming out, debris all over the grill. They took tape off the grill, no tires, fuel only, but they did get that tape off the grill. Makes sense that he picked up the most debris there. He was leading the race, and anything on the track went right on his grill. Look at Carl Edwards go high, that's making the, it three wide. That's the blue and white 99 way on the outside. Patrick comes up to cover the spot behind Johnson. And Denny Hamlin can't hold the lead against Kevin Harvick in the four. The best drivers in the world is the reason why they can run 200 miles an hour in three wide and not crash. Not saying they won't, but they haven't yet. Jeff? Uh, you know how these guys are running side by side and not crashing. Well, a lot of it has to do, Michael, you know, with your spotter. And for that 99 car, Jason Hedleski has been on that radio since the drop of the green flag, trying to get him up front. I mean, he has worked him high, he's worked him low. Carl has done nothing, just drive the wheels off this thing since the drop of the green flag. But keeping these guys out of trouble has a lot to do with the spotters. What about our buddy Denny Hamlin? He started on the pole, fell all the way back to last, and now he's fought his way all the way back to first. Tell me you can't pass at this racetrack. Ooh, a little Whoa. contact there between Logano's yellow car and the orange and green machine of Patrick. She got loose, Mike. 
Yeah, we have 16 of our 18 drivers. You're looking at 16 drivers there running within three quarters of a second each other as we're 25 laps into this race. You see Jamie McMurray right there. He, I think he's gonna be okay. He may go a lap down, but we know we're gonna get a caution in about five laps. He would get the free pass being the first and only driver a lap down. But he's looking in his mirror. Probably looks like a pack of hungry dogs coming out of there. Three wide behind him. Fastest lap of the race so far, Tony Stewart, 200.3 miles per hour. And that is one of the options that you can vote for to determine the starting lineup for the final segment is fastest lap of the race. This is the fastest of the fast pole winners for 2013. These guys and girls can really lay the hammer down. And right now, Tony Stewart's the fastest of them all. Another option is most laps led in the first two segments. And you saw the tally there. Look at it, Danica Patrick there, sitting up there in the sixth position. Jeff Hammond was just doing a report on her. And remember, about 15 laps ago, she just about had completely lost the lead pack. Those guys got to mixing it up, getting side to side, and she was able to pull them back in. That's the advantage of that bigger rear spoiler on the back. It opens a bigger hole in the air, and she took advantage of it. Three laps left in this first of three segments tonight. Two laps ago, it was Brad Keselowski who got his number two into the back of Danica Chevy. Ooh, that's not where you want to do it either, coming through the trial, but the cars are a little bit light through there anyway. That's the loosest part of the whole racetrack. You got a guy pushing on you, that makes it worse. Right, that was the contact. It was not Keselowski's teammate Logano in the 22, but they're all pretty much in the same position right now. Now they're heading back into the trial. Well, they're going to catch the lap car of Jamie McMurray in that one car is we're now going to have two laps to go before that first caution. And Jimmy Johnson makes it side by side back for the third second spot. And they're going to have to go three wide around McMurray. Steve Ryan Newman in the 31 has been very quiet in this race so far. Mike, he was up there mixing it up for a while. He's going to school right now. He just said, I am just studying what these guys are doing up front. He said there's a lot of side drafting going on right now. And side drafting will get you loose. Guys just want to get right up to your quarter panel and they can push your car around, especially through the trial or in the corners if you try to do that. That's a risky maneuver. Michael, we're seeing a little bit of bump drafting. Kozlowski gave Patrick another shot and then dropped to the low side. They're going to leave her up in the high groove as Kyle Busch moves to the bottom and on by. What effect does bump drafting have the way things are right here? As we're a lap to go in the first segment. I just haven't seen it be an advantage yet, Mike. All I've seen it do is hurt. We saw Danica fall back. It gets guys and girls sideways when you run into them. I haven't seen anything that uh, I like about bump drafting right now. Kyle Busch riding with the number 18. That's Stenhouse, the 17 alongside. Really solid run here for Denny Hamlin from the front to the back. Oh, Jimmy Johnson around. Headed for the infield wall and bounces off the safer barrier as they come to the caution flag. Completing segment one and likely completing Jimmy Johnson's night. You all right, brother? Yep. Uh, all right, my man. Oh, the left side of that car is all torn up. Four. Head four. You're okay though, right? Yep. yep. Johnson puts the window net down, a signal to safety officials that he is okay. Mike, you Let's just have asked, a look. You asked the question, does bump drafting help? It looks like Harvick gets a good run right up on the back of Johnson. Does he get into him at all, or does Jimmy just slide up the track and get loose? It was really hard to tell from that angle right there. It looked possibly like he just had a baby get a, got a little bit of a push in the front end, went up the track just a bit. Let's see if we can tell. You could definitely hear the RPM come up on the engine. I don't know if that's when the tires broke loose or when he got hit on the hit on the back. Steve? 
Hey, I just wanted to update Kevin Harvick, Mike. Uh, he said that was a lesson learned for me. He said the 48 tried to pull up and he just got loose. It, it appeared that way. It felt like he just moved up the hill and when he maybe tried to come back down, it spun around. Let's see if we can look out of Kevin's car. Yeah, he just got loose. Just right. got loose. He's big, he's big outside. Well, no apparent contact between those two, but Johnson went to the inside safer barrier and then through the grass. And this would be the third straight time that he has failed to finish the Sprint Unlimited. And he just got loose. It, it appeared that way. It felt like he just moved up the hill and when he maybe tried to come back down, it spun around. Let's see if we can look out of Kevin's car. Yeah, he just got loose. Just got loose. Well, no apparent contact between those two, but Johnson went to the inside safer barrier and then through the grass. And this would be the third straight time that he has failed to finish the Sprint Unlimited. Not a mark on the front of that car, is there, Mike? No, no contact, I don't think. The first segment ends with Jimmy Johnson climbing out of his wrecked race car and Denny Hamlin, the leader. Ready to restart for segment two of the Sprint Unlimited. Another look at what happened here to Jimmy Johnson. This is from Kevin Harvick. You can see Johnson goes high and then turns left. On board the 48. And Michael, he had Kevin Harvick right there at that left rear quarter panel, which puts you in a bad situation as well. Yeah, it makes you lose for sure. And that's why the bump drafting is so tricky. And if you just get real close to someone, you can almost get loose. And Kevin Harvick said over the radio, there was no contact between them. Johnson came up, got loose and went around. Green flag for the restart. Brad Keselowski with no tires. Jeff Gordon in the 24 did not take tires, nor did Danica Patrick but her fuel man was over the wall too quickly. She had to come in for a penalty. She'll restart at the back. So she got her four fresh tires when she served her penalty. We heard a report from the pits. They asked Denny Hamlin, could he get back to the front if he took four tires? Oh yeah, well, he's only starting fourth, so he doesn't have to go far to get there. On the break, a little contact between Keslowski and Gordon. Here we are three wide, Ambrose in the nine, Kyle Busch, Jamie Mack, and Danica pulls up. Kyle Busch had a bit of an extended period of a stay on pit road, went to the back, so he'll be battling to get back up through there. Now this segment is just 25 laps. Kozlowski, the leader, way up high this time. Hamlin with him. Gordon trying on the bottom with Harvick. like right now Brad Keselowski in that two he keeps searching which line should I be in front of we saw Hamlin out front doing the same thing you can only block for so long though Larry somebody get a run on you and they'll pin you down Jimmy Johnson released from the care center is with Jeff Hammond thanks Mike yes Jimmy uh, are you okay first and foremost and then what happened yeah, I'm fine, absolutely. Uh, racing hard with the, uh, trying to find a way by the 11 and the transition off of four there, uh, the back of the car got light and the car just kind of did a slow, lazy spin and, and lost the back of it. So I was trying to set up a pass on the 11 and, and work in the air and uh, in the end, ended up kind of getting turned around there above four. Better look next week. Yep, you got it. Tells you how tricky this stuff is, Mike, at 200 miles an hour, six-time champion, just tried to make a move to the high side, and his car got loose, and around he went. This has not been his race. He won it in 2005, but three straight DNFs here for Jimmy Johnson in the Sprint Unlimited. You know, so far, no tires seems to be the right call. At least for Brad Keselowski, who leads this. And Jeff Gordon is in seventh, and we're told that Ryan Newman's number 31 has lost its power steering. 
He's a big dude. He can wrestle that thing for a, a sprint race tonight. I don't know, Larry, I don't know about this no tire decision. I think that we've seen cars just on the edge of loose enough to where I'd like to have fresh tires right now so that maybe on the next stop I can just get my two and be happy with my car. Yeah, I think that's the key, Michael, because I think no matter what, whether it's the fan vote for a mandatory two-tire stop for that last segment, getting four tires there made sense. I don't know that there's speed in it, but it's just going to let you as a driver be able to maneuver your car better. you got to be aggressive. We've seen these guys all over each other, very aggressive racing. And if your car isn't handling well, you try to make one of those moves, around, she'll go. What I like most about the race we're seeing tonight is you can pull up and pass. What Whether I like, it's up top or down low, as Denny Hamlin and the 11's doing right now for the lead. Remember that extended stay on pit road I told you about with Kyle Busch? He's already raced, raced his way all the way to the top four as well. Those Joe Gibbs racing cars, two, three, and four right now. Pow, that was a love tap from Kyle Busch to Brad Keselowski, who lost a lot of momentum somehow at the end of the straightaway. But think about Jimmy McMurray in that one car. He got the free pass on that caution. He got such a runoff turn two the last time, he actually had to back up and almost stack the entire outside. Oh, oh around goes Kenseth. And up into Tony Stewart, and cars are in the wall hard. We see Carl Edwards there in the 99, Matt Kenseth in the 20. Danica hadn't hit anything, and then her her right front was hit by Ricky Stenhouse Jr. late in that crash. Stewart's car is hit hard against the wall. That's Jeff Gordon wedged in there too, isn't it, Mike? It is. Big crash. Matt Kenseth going around that's triggered all this. Remember uh, that Stewart who was moving around in the car, recuperating from that hard leg injury from six months ago. Kurt Busch is the third car in that pile. There goes Carl Edwards and what's left of his Ford. And Matt Kenseth is able to drive away, but with major damage. So too Danica Patrick, who spun and had it missed. All right, so there's Stuart Gordon and Kurt Busch. Jeff Gordon climbs out. He's okay. Kurt Busch climbs out. And Stuart's being helped from his car. Yeah, Tony has trouble getting in and out of his car under normal circumstances, so I'm sure he's just taking his time. Remember in uh, pre-race, Stewart said he installed a knee knocker off the steering column to help protect his legs. Good thing. And Tony's out of the car, completely under his own power, and that is a huge relief. It is that. Oh boy. She went spinning through that crash, Mike, and hadn't hit a thing. But as they came out of the trial, Stenhouse Jr. drove into the side of her. Let's have a look from the Goodyear blimp first. All right, here's Matt Kenseth right there in the 20 car. Joey Logano on the inside. Kyle Busch is the yellow car on the outside. Like Matt went to dive to the bottom and Joey was already had a nose in yep. there and around Kenseth went. You can see hard contact to the right front for Stewart. Edwards gets the right front of Stewart's car that tips it into the wall. Watch Danica. Yep. She's sliding. She hasn't hit anything. Nope. She's in the orange and green car. She thinks I've got this baby missed. But Stenhouse Jr. comes. Oh my goodness. All four Stuart Haas racing drivers were involved in that wreck. The bright yellow car, Kenseth, he's coming down because Brad Keselowski slowed up. He was trying to get out of that lane, but like you said, the 22 of Logano was already there. Logano got there. Matt decided he was going to hook a left and dive low. Dale Jr. misses it on the inside. Stenhouse was... Stenhouse was in the first crash. I don't think he had any steering, Larry, when he got to Danica. To the wall, to the wall. All good. Yellow's out, yellow's out, yellow's out. Wave them off. Big wreck behind you. That's what you want to hear from your spotter. If there's going to be a big wreck, it's behind you. You can see Ricky had been into the wall on the outside, yes. and he's just helpless. No steering in that car. 
And that makes better sense because what I saw in the first replay, it's like he never slowed down. Maybe no steering, maybe no brakes, maybe neither one. At 194 miles per hour, Keselowski suddenly slows about three miles an hour and Kenseth tries to get away from him. Just wanted to, wanted to fill that hole on the bottom, but the hole filled itself. Yeah, Joy Logano on the 22 was all the way against the double yellow line. That's just a tough break for Danica. She lost control and was going to be just fine. And well, she tried to go to the inside, but Carl was there, so she juked to the outside and the car got away from her. Now watch the 24 of Jeff Gordon. There's Ryan Newman getting by. And look up top, Gordon Mike. tipped up into the 99 of Edwards, There's and Kurt Busch piles in in the 41. And then here comes Stenhouse, hard contact into the outside wall, into the back of Kurt wow. Busch. Lifted him up, lifted Gordon up. And now he's just a passenger. Yep. And that's why the 17 of Stenhouse had either no steering or no brakes and went straight into the path of Danica. Here it is. You're riding with Stenhouse. Wow. Carl Edwards out of the race, Steve Burns. And uh, Carl has had a chance to look at the replays a couple of times, and there's uh, not much to do but, I guess, laugh. <laughs> That's awfully expensive fun, but it is fun. <laughs> Everybody's having a good time. Uh, if, you, if you can look here, the Krylon's not even scratched, so the, the Krylon worked. But um, it's a mess. Besides that, other other than that, I mean, the deck lid looks good. Um, the rest of it's pretty torn up. I, I did learn a bunch though, and that's the key to this race. Even though we got a torn up race car, the guys worked really hard on it, and it's a shame. We learned a bunch, had some fun. I think we're we're better in a better position for the qualifying race than the 500. Carl, you looked at the replays a bunch of times. What did you think when you saw it? <laughs> I don't. It's it's too bad, but um, it looked like Matt just pulled down in, in front of uh, Joey there. The way we're racing out there, I mean, you, you, things like that are going to happen. Matt's, he's good, and he's, he's good enough to know that he did that, too. I think he already said he did it. So, um, hell, it's, it's racing. I mean, we're, we're going hard, and that's what tonight was about. There's, I mean, it's about checkers or wreckers, and we ended up with the, the latter. All right, thanks, bud. All right, thanks. All right, behind the pace car, the remaining cars are being pulled down pit road. They will park in their pit stalls and repairs will be allowed. Huge break for Ryan Newman. We got a report that he had power steering issues. A six car jam session in the Sprint Unlimited. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything they learn making tires for the grueling demands of NASCAR inspires what rolls into yours. Goodyear, official tire of NASCAR. So it's Speedway Saturday night under a full moon. Clint, what have you seen? I mean, this this action has been intense. There's nine cars, and, and I can't pick a favorite. Any one of those nine cars can use this draft, use these runs we've seen them get in order to win this race. Is that what you're seeing? I just told my people on Twitter, readjust your picks. So we got new cars to root for now. <laughs> but uh, you know what I'm seeing is, is the old school bump draft and having a fast car to get to the front. That's not the case anymore. Um, perfecting the side draft, slowing the, the momentum down from the car to your inside, the outside, using that to your advantage. That's a key to success right now is what I'm seeing. I know you're real disappointed you weren't in this race tonight. Do you feel differently now that you saw <laughs> what just happened? Well, it depends. If I was still out there right now, I'd still be thinking, you know, I'm bummed out. But uh, after that wreck, it was pretty big. I wouldn't want to be uh, Stenhouse right now. Put it that way. <laughs> i tell you what, give a call to Rodney Childers and Kevin Harvick's team. That car was involved in that wreck. He's out there, he's on the lead lap, as well as Ryan Newman's team in a 31 Luke Lambert. Looks like they maybe repaired that power steering problem. Half the field is gone with 10 laps complete. 11 now in the second of three segments. We're back under green. And anyone in the other half can win this thing. Denny Hamlin, Brad Keselowski as they run through the speedy drive. 
I Kyle think, Busch, Logano, and Earnhardt. I think the two fastest cars that I've seen tonight are Kyle Busch and Denny. They're lined up on the inside, bumper to bumper, they're teammates, and those cars have been really strong. Both of them have gone from the back to the front, and that's the key to being successful at Daytona. Anybody can run out front, but can you get through the field? And then you have the Penske teammates on the outside there, Brad Keselowski in the two, Joey Logano in the 22. And if they've got that power steering fixed on Newman's car, he's been fast all throughout practice. He could become a factor. But Michael, a big concern for me is the closing rate of one car to another. Joey Logano jumped into that spot to where Matt Kenseth didn't know he was there, and it seems that cars are catching and moving very quickly one to the other. Don't you love it? That's what we're after. We want to see these guys mix it up. They will get used to the closing rate. This is the first time they've been on the track with these new rules, and so they've got to They've got to learn on the fly, and that's exactly what they're doing. And that's why the action has been so intense because of the closing rates. Well, nine cars have been put through the blender already here tonight. Nine remain. Keslowski and Hamlin still side by side, Jeff Hammond. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Danica Patrick, your first Sprint Unlimited. Uh, well, what would you think? I'm bummed it got cut short. That was really fun, learning a lot for sure. Um, uh, bum for the team, bum for GoDaddy, but um, but it was a good warm up for me. It was good to just get familiar with all the little things again and closing rates and runs and rearview mirror and where everybody's at and you know getting bumped and hanging on to it and <laughs> all those sorts of things. But uh, you know it would have been fun to be out there and be one of the last nine cars, but or make it ten. But um, we were close. Uh, as soon as the accident happened, I looked like it was going high, so I went low and. Um, I went as low as I could, and I thought I'd just end up going straight through the grass, but it hooked and it spun, and I'd about come to a stop, and everything was fine. I thought, oh, I'm going to need four tires, and, and then I got hit. So uh, I hit by my boyfriend. What a bummer, right? Uh, but his said his hood was up, and he couldn't see anything. So, um, yeah, not the way I wanted it to go at all. Well, good luck tomorrow qualifying. Thanks, Jeff. Kevin Harvick has lost the draft as Kozlowski tries to hold station. That speedy dry they're kicking up there down toward turn number one. Not somebody's engine going up in smoke. There's the variation in the speeds as Kozlowski. Four to five miles an hour faster right there than Hamlin. And now just, has a little help. And that just goes back and forth, doesn't it? That's what the side drafting is all about. You take someone's momentum away. Look at Joey Logano drop to the bottom. These guys are just really trying to figure out how to make moves. Logano around Kozlowski for the lead. Here comes the Gibbs teammates of Bush and Hamlin trying to push back up there. We wouldn't have seen this a year ago, Mike. With this few of cars, they wouldn't be able to be racing like this. This is good. New leader, Middletown, Connecticut's Joey Logano. <laughs> In the 22, Krista. Mike, at some point, look for Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the 88 to hook up with Jamie McMurray in the one. Dale came on the radio to talk to his spotter, TJ Majors, and said, help me find my teammate. TJ said, they're both gone. He said, nope, Jamie McMurray, he's my teammate, at least for the rest of the night. Well, they're both in Chevrolets, as is Ryan Newman and Kevin Harvick, who has lost the draft by a full straightaway. Here, there's a lot of real estate between Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the 88 and Jamie McMurray in the one, but they both run the Hendrick engine plant. Now, we just saw Kevin Harvick there for a moment in the four. We saw that he actually had a tire rub, Steve. That's the reason he's lost the drag. Yeah, that's exactly right, Larry Mack. He just told his crew, my car went high going into turn three like I have a tire going down. But the saving grace, he knows there's a caution in about nine and a half laps. So they'll be able to get the pit road and maybe rectify that problem. Just need to ride it out here for about nine and a half more laps. Must have figured out it was something else, though. He stayed on the track. He wouldn't be doing that with a with the tire that he thinks going flat, I would, wouldn't think. These guys have lined it up. They're probably content to run to the run to the break with some sort of order. But I wouldn't be surprised if somebody did decide to make a move. But this order right here has no teammates nose to tail. It's Ford, Toyota, Chevy, Toyota, Ford, Chevy, Ford, Chevy. So no help. It's no intentional help right now. Looks like Hamlin's getting a little bit antsy in that second spot. He knows he has Junior behind him. Del Junior has a really fast car. Then he's backed up to Junior. I think that's on purpose, Larry. I think he came off the gas, got a little gap between he and Logano. Now making a big run on him. There they go. 
Yeah, Joey Logano on that 22, he could not hold him off that time. He had no choice but to get out of the way. And that's just smart racing by Hamlin. They're trying to figure out what it's going to take to win this race later on tonight, Larry. Then he backed up to Dale Jr., got a run, left Logano out front on his own, and around him they went. Now, when they wave the yellow flag for the end of this segment, which is coming up in just eight laps, or about six minutes from now, the vote will close as to how to line them up for the final segment. Should it be a mandatory two-tire pit stop and how they come off pit road? Should it be the fastest lap of the race, or should it be the most laps led? to determine the restart order for the final 20 laps. I've been you can vote now at NASCAR.com. I've been politicking on my Twitter to make it the pit stop. I want to see these pit crew guys get involved in this baby. That What that accomplished, it makes these guys want to run hard here in the closing laps, be the first on the pit road, and then involves that pit crew. You know, one driver we have not talked about is Marcus Ambrose in that nine car, sitting there in fourth place right now. Dodge that big wreck and a solid run for Marcus Ambrose. And just to review your choices, the fastest lap of the cars that are still out there, Brad Keselowski, Kyle Busch, Ryan Newman. Most laps led, Denny Hamlin, Jamie McMurray, Kyle Busch. First off pit road after this next caution flag? We'll have to wait and see. And Steve I, Burns did give me a confirmation that Ryan Newman's crew did get the power steering fixed during that red flag on that 31 car. You're riding with him here. Well done. And I want to guarantee you, Clint Boyer down in the Hollywood Hotel and all the drivers watching this race took note of that move that Denny Hamlin just made, backing up, hang, hanging the leader out to dry, more or less, by getting help from behind to make that pass. We'll see if Dell Jr. pulls the same move to get around Hamlin. Brad Kozlowski completes that pass in his Ford number two. So going back to the big pileup, it appears that the slowdown by Kozlowski that caused Kenseth to change lanes was simply a matter of working the draft and the disparity in speeds between the two front cars. Nothing more than that. Side drafting can slow a car down three or four, five miles an hour. You can put that right front quarter panel right on that fender of the car you're beside and really hold them up. Look at the run Logano has in the 22. He caught his teammate like the two were magnetized together. And that was a saving grace for Brad Keselowski in the two because he was down at the bottom of the racetrack with no help whatsoever, and he finally got help, and then the rest of the drivers went there to the bottom. Denny Hamlin's led 18 laps tonight, make it 19. This is good-looking stuff. These guys are really using their brains to try to figure out where to put their car in order to be able to make a move. And this is just 75 laps tonight. A week from Sunday on Fox, 200 laps, 500 miles. 43 cars and I see a last lap pass for the win of the Daytona 500 straight in our future This is a small group of cars and yet they're able to make these moves you put 30 or 40 of them up there together whew, It's gonna be great I know we've talked a lot about Denny Hamlin in the 11, Brad Keselowski in the 2, but Dale Earnhardt Jr. in that 88 You better not take your eye off of him his hot streak continues. He ended the season last year on a roll, and here he sets again, starting 14, in a position to win another race. Junior had two poles in 2013 to earn his way into the Sprint Unlimited, a race that he has won twice so far. Michael, look at Dale Earnhardt Jr. He was looking in the rearview mirror as much as he was looking out the windshield. I wish we could have a camera that would follow the driver's eyes. You look behind you more than you look out front. You assume what's going on ahead of you. You can't assume what's going on behind you. Your peripheral vision can catch what's out front. You got to look out back, and these guys' eyeballs are going back and forth a hundred times a second. Three laps to the caution flag might have been a little contact between Newman's 31 and Ambrose in the nine as they came through the trioval. Look at him. Okay, maybe not a hundred a second, but a bunch. Dale Earnhardt Jr. Look ahead, look to the mirror. Look ahead, look to the mirror. Repeat. He's 
But Mike, you're right. The same thing almost happened with Marcus Ambrose and Ryan Newman that happened to Matt Kenseth and Joey Logano that caused that big wreck. And you see that big run that Kyle got to the outside and Marcus to the bottom? That's because Dale was backing up away from Hamlin. It caused those guys to, to sort of stack up. They took the opportunity to make a move to the outside and inside of Logano, and look at the result. Joey Logano's 22 got caught in what Darrell Waltrip likes to call the sucker hole. Right in the middle and back you go. And DW, glad you're recuperating from gallbladder surgery. We'll see you here in Daytona next week. And we want to wish Matt Yoakum a quick recovery as well. From back surgery, he'll be with us on Thursday. This is when things are going to pick up. It's really risky if you're Dale Jr. to try to back up to Keselowski if he just decides to make the move on you. But that's what you have to do if you want to make the pass. You've got to get away from Hamlin so you get some momentum. If the fans vote for a two-tire mandatory pit stop, the best chance to be first off a of pit road is to be first on to pit road. That's why this next lap is important. And I think regardless of the fan vote, I think with this few drivers, strategy will be all over the place for that 20-lap run. Maybe right side tires, left side tires. Wouldn't be surprised to see teams go ahead and change four tires. Hamlin, Earnhardt, Keselowski. Single file with Kyle Busch, and that's Ryan Newman all alone on the inside. There it is. A lot of jostling here goes Brad, and it's Hamlin to block. Yeah, Denny Hamlin in 11 got down in front of Brad Keselowski just in the nick of time. And they said so long to Dale Jr., who jumps back in line in seventh. Jr. tried to make the move, but Hamlin shut the door, and that opened the door for Brad Keselowski, but they can't do anything with Hamlin. Denny Hamlin comes to the line. He is the leader at the end of segment two. Kyle Busch, Brad Keselowski, McMurray and Ambrose, and the caution is out. Will they have to make a pit stop? How will they line up for the final 20-lap segment? Does the pace car have a good shot at it tonight? <laughs> Fans have voted. The restart order for the final segment, the choices, fastest lap, most laps led, or a mandatory two-tire pit stop. And the fans have decided they will stop for two tires, and the first car off pit road will lead them back to the green. Yes, I love that. And I know there's a bunch of men down there on pit road that love it, too. They're going to make a difference in this race. Thanks to all the fans who voted, and thanks to Sprint for making the Sprint Unlimited your race you decide how the races run tonight. So Denny Hamlin, by being the leader at the end of segment two, has put himself in great position. Brad Keselowski, Kyle Busch, Jamie McMurray, Marcus Ambrose, the first five. You know, we talked at the start of the night about the 1979 Bush Clash, the very first race in this series that now has run 36 years. Well, it had nine cars and went 20 laps. What are we about to do? run nine cars for 20 laps for $200,000 to win. And what I would have thought, if we'd have had all 17 or 18 drivers still out there, I think for track position, these drivers may have opted to go with possibly just two left side tires to get in there and get out there quick. But as I pointed out earlier, it's a minimum two tire stop. You can change four, and I would not be a bit surprised to see some of these drivers change four tires, Michael, like we were talking earlier, to be able to let you to maneuver that race car on four fresh Goodyear tires. Well, Denny Hamlin has been from the back to the front. He knows he can do it. 20 laps is plenty of time to race through nine cars. I'm like you, Larry. This team also, Denny is very confident in his pit crew. He said he has the best pit crew on pit road. I wouldn't be surprised to see him get four, thinking that he won't lose all nine spots. All right, crews at the ready. Now, Kevin Harvick's car is already on pit road. They continue to repair crash damage on Harvick's number four Chevrolet. On the right of your screen is the order in which they will enter Pit Road. And the green light is on. Pit Road's open. Here they come to determine how they will line up to restart. Steve. Okay, here we go, Mike. Brad Keselowski cheering his team on. He said, boys, get those lug nuts tight. Meanwhile, Darian Grubb, crew chief on the 11, said, don't slide your tires. Don't make any mistakes. Perfect stop for Denny Hamlin in that regard. Krista. 
JD McMurray just a little bit loose. They're going to make a slight adjustment in those tires, but nobody was more excited for the way the fans voted than Kyle Busch's crew, one of the best crews on pit road. His two tire stop is done. Looks like he had a lot of wheel spin getting out of his pit, though, Krista. It appears the only driver that elected to go with four tires, Ryan Newman, in that 31 car. Big jump for Dale Earnhardt Jr., picking up four positions on pit road, and Joey Logano picks up two. Crews getting it done. Get ready for the finale. 20 laps to go in Daytona tonight. All right, they're in turn three, headed for four and for the green flag for 20 laps. What they'll be talking about for the whole next week is the closing rate of these cars that has produced both great competition and great calamity tonight. You know, Michael Waltrip will be talking about it. You'll be experiencing it next week in the Daytona 500, buddy. It, it looks like a lot of fun, Larry. <laughs> I don't want to be right out there in the middle of them. Just like the first Bush clash, this Sprint Unlimited comes down to nine cars for 20 laps. But instead of 50, there's a $200,000 first prize that awaits one of these drivers. Denny Hamlin's won the first two segments. I just don't see a, a driver being able to set up front all 20 laps of this baby. I think it's going to be a lot of passing, a lot of going on during this segment. Now, just remember, Dale Earnhardt Jr. said, where is my teammate, Jamie McMurray, in the one? Well, he has found him here on this restart, and you can see them making that outside line work with five drivers out there. Denny Hamlin saying, what the heck just happened? They have the nine of Marcus Ambrose with him. That's a Ford behind the two Chevrolets. Krista? Something else being said with the J Dale Earnhardt Jr. team, crew chief Steve Letarte reminding his driver, with the smaller pack, we're probably going to get a lot more cleaner air. We can be aggressive. These final 20 laps, it's all about who has the best legs. Tell you who else is being aggressive. You're looking at him right now, Ryan Newman in that 31 car. Remember, one of the drivers, four fresh tires on that pit stop. Great move by Dale Jr. to close off that run. Not only did he close off the run that Newman had, he was able to use that push and grab the lead away from McMurray. And bye-bye, Jamie McMurray in the one. Now, that's abandonment right there. In a hurry. That, that was his friend, his teammate. And it's now the sixth-place car. A couple of those Gibbs Toyotas now are back toward the back of the pack. You see Hamlin making a move on the inside of McMurray. That's a fast car. That's a pass he makes on his own. His teammates just ahead look for those two to hook up and go back to the front. Ambrose was third, went straight to the back. Eight. Harvick has lost the draft. It's an eight-car shootout. Yeah, Kyle Busch in the 18, he keeps hunting the bottom of the racetrack. He finally gets his teammate, Denny Hamlin, in the 11 to go down there with him. And look at him go around that two of Brad Kozlowski. We know how fast he is. That's those team cars working together. Kyle got a big push from Denny and drove all the way up around Logano. Now here comes Kozlowski in this white Ford trying to catch his teammate, Joey Logano, on the outside. Perfect example of side drafting there. Kyle reached over rubbed up against the 22 and used his momentum to propel ahead of him. And it stalled out the 22 of Logano, so Keselowski had to get out of the gas and nowhere to go. I think that's the case, Michael. It's not that you pick up speed, it's you stall that other driver out. And that's what's been happening ever since they put restrictor plates on these babies. And some of these guys are just better at taking advantage of it than others, and we're seeing that tonight. Logano in that yellow Ford just ahead of his teammate Kozlowski looking back from Brad's number two. Third and fourth behind the Chevrolets of Earnhardt Jr. and Ryan Newman. The cool thing about what we're seeing here, guys, is every no one can win from six or seven. They know that. So they're going to take every chance they can to get up to the first two or three spots. Example, teammates to the bottom. Here comes the Penske cars. Well, and we talked teammates until Dale Jr. abandoned Jamie McMurray. Is McMurray, is he hot? Does he just want to get back up there? Is he mad? No, he's not mad. He understands. That's just part of the gig. Big run by Dale Jr. When Newman came up behind him, Jr. had to take advantage of that run. And Denny Hamlin, the 11 right there, he pretty much made a hole at the bottom of the racetrack right there. Just almost rooted Marcus Ambrose in the nine off the bottom. And by the way, rooting someone off the bottom at 200 miles an hour. That's yes, what sir. these guys, that's the commitment they've made. They know that they're going to have to be aggressive to win this race, and it's going to take rooting to make it happen. 
Here's a look at the five hour energy move of tonight's race and oh Kyle Busch around. Okay. And he saves it as he did in 2012 when he went on to win. He spins it and saves it. Caution is out. Yeah he just turned it down and there, was, there, there wasn't a hole there. Some damage this time though Mike you see the splitters up in the middle on the, the nose of the cars up where he hit the grass so the team will have to get to pit. Has so to get that to pit and work on it. That is your five hour energy move of the race right there. Kyle Busch as he did two or three times in 2012 started that wreck and just didn't finish it. That's amazing. That's talent. And here's a look at it. There is the 18 of Kyle Busch in front of Marcus Ambrose. He just thinks I'm going to cut to the bottom. Kozlowski is there. When you make a mistake and you can recover from it, your team's pretty thankful. He actually did that a couple of times and got by with it. It just didn't work that time. We'll see if they can get that nose repaired and he can get out there and make some more action for us. Watch this move. Just had him run, decided to try to take advantage of it. What room? Michael, we know these cars have the big side headrests. The drivers have mirrors, but they have limited view to the blind spots right and left off those rear quarters. Over front of Joey now. You can see and there was no spotter involved in that. Kyle Busch had a run. He thought he could turn to the coming. left and make it. We Yellow's do that out. a lot Yellow's out there. Out. You can't wait around when you have a run for your spotter to say clear because you don't. it won't work if you do that. He just felt like he had room. The seat of his pants told him he could make that move, and they're just, he needed a foot. And this happened so fast, did Kozlowski even have a chance to turn down to get away from it? No, Brad was as surprised as Kyle was. <laughs> Kyle was surprised Brad was there, and, and Brad was surprised Kyle came over. Oh, we got some pit stops. What a save, though. Steve? Well, Denny Hamlin reported that he had a left front tire going down, so they're going to bring him in, as you see, and change four tires on that number 11 for Denny Hamlin. Ryan Newman is in. Kyle Busch, Krista. Yeah, Kyle Busch came on the radio. Dave Rogers, crew chief, said, how bad is it? Kyle said, not bad. We've won with a lot worse. That's confidence, isn't it? <laughs> that he did. He won this race after having a couple of those kind of issues. Let's ride along. Never quit driving that race car, did he? No. Drive all the way to when you run into something, then you drive it some more. He never hit anything. Hope he didn't hurt that engine as he grabbed third gear and that thing turned. Oh, about five figures worth of RPM. Caution is out in Daytona. You're watching the Sprint Unlimited on Fox Sports 1. UFC fight night coming up right after the race. It's been fight night here in Daytona. As eight remain of the 18 that started and Dale Earnhardt Jr. You're riding along with him. He is your leader and here's how the 88 got the lead. This is the benefit of blocking. You only you don't only block to keep someone behind you but also to get a push. Ryan Newman had a tremendous run on Junior. He got in front of him, used that to propel himself by his teammate that he claimed earlier in the race, Jamie McMurray. And at this point right here on the box straight away, he doesn't even know who Jamie McMurray is. No idea. Who was that guy? <laughs> what have you done for me lately? <laughs> Great move by Dale Jr. When they come to the flag, it'll be 12 laps to go. They'll take the green flag this time by. Stay tuned for UFC tonight. You got Machida or Masasi? I believe you got it right that time. You did. I don't know which one I want to pull for, but I like saying that. But we're going to watch it. Yeah, I love those fights. It's going to be fun. I don't think they're going to have as much action as we've had tonight in the Sprint <laughs> Unlimited, but it's going to be exciting. And this one's not over. Green flag, 12 to go. And we keep talking about teammates. Joey Logano on that 22. He keeps finding his teammate, Brad Keselowski, in that two car behind him. Can you believe we can have so much fun with nine race cars on a two and a half mile track? Kevin Harvick's team has worked hard to make repairs to that car so he could get up there and contend for this win. Couldn't keep with the draft earlier. Looks like he's there now. And the car that's missing from that group is Kyle Busch. He is nearly a straightaway behind. 
Yeah, they had to keep coming to pit road to work on the hood as well as the front splitter area. But don't count him out yet. No, sir. <laughs> All he needs is one more caution. One caution and the whole game can change. That full moon affects the tides. It affects race cars as well. We've seen a lot of that tonight as Joey Logano brings them across. It must affect pace cars too, Mike, but you've convinced me a full moon Saturday night is something worth watching on Fox Sports 1. Well, Logano gets out to a pretty good lead right there, which uh, is a good thing most tracks, but maybe not here. I don't like it right now, Larry. The rubber band effect is going to pull this field to him and maybe past him. And what he's doing right now is staring at that rear view mirror, trying to figure out which way he wants to go when that pack catches him. Riding with Ryan Newman, Denny Hamlin, the 11 alongside, Kevin Harvick trailing this front pack. Luckily for Logano, his teammate Brad Kozlowski was the first one to him. No aggressive move there. Just went to Whoa, the Junior in the wall. And Marcus Ambrose. Good grief. Yellow waves yet again. Bad. Yeah, band up. All four of the Stuart Haas cars and all three of the Hendrick Motorsports cars in this race are now junk. I think Dale Jr. is expressing his displeasure with Mar Marcus Ambrose as he went by. All right, let's have a look at the 88 of Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Marcus Ambrose right behind him in the nine. We talked about bump drafting being a tricky game. Gave him a push and then hooked him and turned him into the wall. There was some, there was a lot going on up ahead of Junior that lost his momentum, and I think Ambrose was just so close to him, he made contact with the back. See the cars moving around in front. The junior never let off the gas. He never came off the gas, Mike, so his. His momentum might have been slowed by those other cars, but it wasn't by much. No, he got the car straightened out well, but the damage was done. And then, after the caution is out, not happy with Marcus Ambrose. Definitely displaying his displeasure there. At even at 200 miles an hour, though, Michael, it's a, it's a game of inches. Ambrose may have come down a little, Junior may have come up a little, but there just wasn't room for both of them in that spot. And Junior Nation was not happy. No. Nor was the president of Junior Nation, Junior himself. <laughs> he was not pleased at all. Nine to go here in Daytona. After the race, UFC Fight Night returns to Fox Sports 1. It's a full night of epic bouts. Middleweights, Lyoto the Dragon Machida and Gagard Musasi as the action begins tonight, right after the Sprint Unlimited, only on Fox Sports 1. The Dragon. Hey, uh, Michael, you remember a few laps ago, we talked about a driver that maybe just needed one more caution. I believe Kyle Busch in that 18 car got the caution he needed to catch up to the pack. And, and Kevin Harvick and Kyle Busch both come back to pit road. Harvick seems done an amazing job of making this car better. He was able to keep up with the draft that time. So if they can, prove, can improve it more, Kyle can get some more work done to that front end. We might've just lost two cars and gained two more. Boy, Harvick's uh, new crew and his new team at Stuart Haas getting a workout. I said all four of their cars were junk. Well, one of them still running. That's Kevin Harvick. They just keep working on Kyle Busch's yep. in the hood area, trying to get all that area sealed up just as good as possible. And then there were seven cars on the lead lap. Ambrose has gone a lap down. Dale Jr. is two laps down. With eight to go. Two Fords, two Chevys, two Toyotas. 
<laughs> and then Kevin Harvick's wounded Chevrolet. Sounded a little like Noah's Ark, but not really. We're just Every one of the three manufacturers still has a strong shot to win this race. They do, and it's still going to be a great race. These rules are making it where you don't have to have a big old glob of cars to make moves. This is going to be fun all the way to the finish. You know, Mike, just looking at the scoring monitor, I, th I think they've kept Marcus Ambrose in that nine car. They have actually kept him on the lead lap right now. Correct, Larry. They've uh, updated scoring, and he is indeed on the lead lap as a good bit of speedy dry goes down coming out of turn four. Like Kyle, toward the entrance of pit road. Like Kyle Busch said over the radio, we've won with a lot worse. We've seen cars torn up about like Ambrose's and Bush are win races at Daytona and Talladega. Kyle Busch did it two years ago in this Sprint Unlimited race. Kyle coming off his best point season ever in the Sprint Cup Series. Poised to contend for a championship perhaps this year. Jeff Hammond. Yeah, we're down here with uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Uh, pretty wild night out there on the racetrack, and uh, you had a pretty good race car. What happened right here right at the end of the race? Well, I think, uh, I don't know, Mark, Marcus, uh, it looks like I was trying to get down a little bit there, and, and Marcus went to the outside. I didn't know he was out there. So, uh, you know, we just uh, hard racing, and uh, I hate it happened, and I was upset with him, but... Um, you know, it can't say really that it was his fault. He just, uh, he was going to the outside and, and I didn't know he was up there. And I thought he was staying with me because he'd been pushing me down the straightaway. So I thought he was kind of committed to that that situation. And uh, a lot was happening right there. And we just got turned around. Well, there you have a guy who almost had a shot at winning this thing tonight, Chris. All right, thanks, Jeff. Dale Earnhardt Jr. with Clint Boyer. Clint, you were watching. You, you think Brad Keselowski had a lot to do with the wreck. You just heard Junior say it wasn't uh, wasn't Ambrose's fault. Well, I don't even think. I, I don't want to put a name on it. It's just simply blocking. Uh, these cars, were, they're sucking up faster than we're accustomed to. you got to pull up there and block that run. Hey, it's the end of the race. It's go time. But uh, simply, I, I think the common denominator with at least three of these crashes is just, you know, the, the run comes fast. They pull up to block them and it leaves them in a bad situation with nowhere to go and they get run into behind when it stacks up so that's what i see yeah so the, the two car blocking is more but tony stewart said it earlier hey i'm yeah. not a fan of blocking but it's what you have it's, to do it is it is and it, it puts everybody in a situation because when you make an evasive move maybe you're not clear uh like kyle bush was and then uh, they stack up behind you kind of like what i saw with the nine it just put everybody in a bad situation so definitely blocking is is a big uh, distributing factor what's going on and it's part of what we'll continue to see for people to have success well, whether... we're about out of cars so we better not see too much more of it <laughs> Well, we'll certainly see it in the Daytona 500 a week from tomorrow, but Joey Logano and Brad Keselowski, Mike, are your, uh, your top two guys in Fords at the moment. Eight cars remain. There's a look at the rundown. They're all on the lead lap. Dale Earnhardt Jr. out of the race in the garage would wind up ninth, Carl Edwards 10th. But eight drivers have a chance to win it here. Three Fords, three Chevrolets, and two Toyotas. Mike, let's see if Kevin Harvick can give us an update on his up and down night. He started out at the front, got crashed. His team's worked hard on that car. Hey, Kevin, it's Michael up in the Fox Sports 1 booth. Your team has done an amazing job. You are able to keep up with the draft that last time. It's a little bit sketchy, um, but, you know, they've done a great job. And this is this is great practice for us, honestly. It's not the, not the night that you wanted to have for a Jimmy John's Chevy, but, heck, they keep crashing. You never know, so... Uh, we keep making the car better, and, and uh, you just got to stay in the race to have a chance to win. Everybody that wrecks gets out of their car and says the closing rates are crazy, and that's why we're running into each other. Are you feeling that? You know, at the beginning of the race, you, you got passed, and before you knew it, you could be at the back of the pack, like on that restart when, uh, when we had that wreck. So, all good, buddy. We'll just keep at it. All right, buddy. Hang in there. They're holding the start of the UFC fight for you, so you're not going to miss anything. I uh, sent for <laughs> He's a big fan. <laughs> he sponsors one of the fighters, Cowboy. Eight to go, and the uh, boy, the orange cone has have a, had a tough full moon Saturday night. Doing a little, doing a little dancing and prancing there. Does How about that? He almost say, I believe he's going to save it. Wow, that was Kyle Busch esque. I've never seen a cone get that kind of air and yet not fall over on its side. Orange cone strutting his stuff tonight, full of himself. <laughs> Well, I would say this Sprint Unlimited has turned into a sprint race because we're only going to have five laps of racing when we get the green flag. 
Light is out atop the safety car. Green flag this time by with five laps to go. Tonight's aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything they learn, making tires for the grueling demands of NASCAR, inspires what rolls into yours. Goodyear official tire of NASCAR. Past our TV compound on the back stretch and coming around. The dominant car throughout the race has been Denny Hamlin in that 11 FedEx car. He was able to win the first two segments, but he's mired back in the fifth spot. The teammates of Logano and Keselowski look strong. Larry, can Denny do anything with them? Well, he has his teammate Kyle Busch behind him, and for the first time in a while, the two Penske drivers are not nose to tail. They're going to start side by side. Joey Logano on the inside, Keselowski on the outside. Michael, when this comes to one to go, you don't have any teammates, do you? No, but to get to one to go, you might need one. But what I love yeah. about Logano, he stretched it out on that last restart. He's got a fast car. Maybe he can make that bottom lane pull forward and bring those boys with him. Logano with McMurray on the inside, the 22 and the 1. Keselowski with Newman on the outside, and they are six cars under a blanket as they come past and take the green flag. Kyle Busch and Ambrose were laying back just a little bit, just in case. Teammates side by side on point. Logano in yellow and red, who had a breakout season last year for Team Penske. And Kozlowski in the two, the 2012 series champion who faltered somewhat trying to defend his title last year. We've almost completed a whole lap and they have not changed from the way they took the restart. Amazing. And, and a, a few of them are tore up, by the way. <laughs> but they're able to hang right in there with them. Logano peeks out ahead. Now, guess what's going to be interesting, Michael? As you see, Brad Keselowski and the two get a little bit out front. Will they hang each other out here being teammates? Looks like Keselowski's going to drop right to the bottom in front of Logano. Or is he? He's trying to hold back both lanes at once, and we know that doesn't work very well for very long. The big run is coming, and he's got to be ready for it. The thing that he's fortunate is that one of the two is his teammate, so maybe his teammate will cut him a break. But it's getting awful late for breaks, Larry. Ryan Newman in that 31 got a pretty good run on the top side off turn four that time, coming to three to go. And that's a lot of maybes, Michael. <laughs> but Keslowski is doing it. He is holding the point, much as Denny Hamlin did early in this race. I bet you Harvick's car wouldn't run within a second of those other boys if it was by itself, but it's not by itself. Here comes Newman to the bottom. He just turned it to the bottom and trying to get the lead from Brad Keselowski. Harvick goes with Keselowski on the high side, and that saves the lead for that Ford out front. Both those cars in second and third have been in wrecks. Oh, by the way, the one in fourth as well. Here comes Kyle Busch up behind. Kevin Harvick in that four car. He just told you on the radio, they keep making it better and better. And there he is, second place with two to go. Looks like Ambrose is blowing up. No, he's got damage to his front. And how about Kyle Busch in the 18 getting the run on the top side? All right. And here comes his teammate, Denny Hamlin, right up behind him. Two Toyotas nose to tail. They've hooked up. Keslowski out front of the four. Toyota's second and third chasing him down. And Kyle Busch just turned it to the bottom, and they're going to do a drag race down the back straightaway. Denny Hamlin three wide past his teammate for the lead. Three wide mid. Three wide mid. Now Logano goes up high, picks up Keslowski, the two and the 22 teammates working together as Hamlin closes the door on Keslowski and holds the bottom and the lead. Here they come with a lap to go in the Sprint Unlimited. Big lead for Denny Hamlin. Watch the run that these boys have behind them, though. They're lined up, and they're going to go get Hamlin. Michael, he'll have to drive out the rearview mirror more than he will the windshield on this lap. It's all about what's out back right now. If those two Penske cars can team up, they can knock Denny out of the lead. Kozlowski went way high in turn two, and here comes help. Logano is with him. But Kozlowski picks up Ryan Newman, or rather Kirk Kyle Busch, down on the bottom. And if Keslowski blocks both lanes, Denny Hamlin's going to get away and win this thing. 
Boy, it's going to be hard for him to catch him. That, that was quite a lead that he got coming off turn two down the back straightaway. He won it as a rookie, and Denny Hamlin comes to the flag and wins the Sprint Unlimited for Toyota and Joe Gibbs Racing. Wow, what a display of power by Denny Hamlin. Any question? Any question? People question Denny Hamlin's comeback. He won at Homestead Miami the last race of the season, and now, any remaining questions, he says? Awesome job, buddy. Welcome back. Don't think so. <laughs> His teammate Kyle Busch pulls up alongside. And in his ninth start in the Sprint Unlimited, it's a second victory for Denny Hamlin. J.D. Gibbs, team president, celebrates sixth Unlimited win for Joe Gibbs Racing and the second time that a Toyota will go to victory lane in this race. Yeah, Mike, he won this race as a rookie in 2006, the only rookie to ever win the Sprint Unlimited. To celebrate, race fans, Sprint is offering the Samsung Galaxy GS4 for $49.99 for a limited time. You can get one now at Sprint.com slash Galaxy 4 or just call 1-800-SPRINT-1. A wild night in Daytona, one that saw more than half the field end up piled up in the garage with major damage. And Denny Hamlin was strong in the first two segments, and he wins it. But I like what I saw tonight. The, these, these drivers, they can race these race cars, and the closing rate, being able to pull back up, I love what I saw, even with just 18 drivers out there. Well, and, and at the end, just with nine guys racing for the win, they were able to make moves. Denny Hamlin came from fifth on that last restart and drove to victory lane. A big night for Chesterfield, Virginia's Denny Hamlin who wins the Sprint Unlimited, a wild one on a full moon Saturday night. Thank you, Chris, yes. On a night where it's sort of survival of the fittest, last man standing, we saw half the field wreck out, but I know for you, this is a little bit of redemption. You came on the radio and said, any question, tell us what you're referring to. Well, best car won, that's, that's for sure. Uh, can't thank um, you know, this FedEx team enough. Thank everyone from FedEx uh, Express. Uh, you know, this is good. We're two in a row now. We're, we're building on something, but uh, still we had a great car all weekend. And, um, you know, got to thank uh, FedEx and Toyota and Sprint. Coke, uh, the Jordan brand, Tag Heuer Eyewear, and the fans, um, thank them for coming out. And, well, it was survival of the fittest for sure. It was just, um, you know, with three to go, we're at the tail end of a, very small pack and it's really hard to get runs but this car just was <laughs> phenomenal i mean you saw it those last couple laps two in a row referring of course to the season finale at homestead last year chris these guys might just be on a roll watch out for denny hamlin in 2014. he's healthy he's happy he's in victory lane i want to thank clint boyer for joining us here in the hollywood hotel we'll see him tomorrow on fox at one o'clock eastern front row qualifying for the daytona 500 a week from Sunday. Our thanks again to the fans for watching and for voting the Sprint Unlimited, having a hand in how this was sorted out. In the end, Denny Hamlin in victory lane. I'm Chris Myers. Thanks for watching us on Fox Sports 1. Let's go to Brazil and UFC Fight Night.